and uh, I'm sure this is something that you've asked a million times before, but uh, the first videotape of ECW that I got as a, I don't know, 13-year-old or whenever it was, was November to Remember 1995. And he made a huge deal about you coming back. You know, the lights went off, come back on, and you're pointing to the sky. And Paul Heyman's there, and he's making a big deal of shaking your hand. I can't remember what was going on there, but do you remember why? I'm sure you remember why you left and what was the deal with you coming back. The deal with me coming back was the month before Terry Funk and Cactus Jack they had a chair on fire and the and the, they had a towel wrapped around the chair and cut the chair on fire and the towel flew into the audience and they caused a lot of trouble and the commission was going to shut down ECW and they made a deal with Paul and Todd Gordon if they brought me back the commission said if they brought me back to ECW they wouldn't shut it down and so that's what they talked me into it. Right. So um, how come you left in the first place? Then? Was it just a money offer from WCW or or what? Um, the, the long story short, I, I had, I had two bookings, one in Japan, one in ECW. I chose the one in Japan over ECW. Paul fired me. So three, so I went to WCW <clears throat> three months later, I quit and came back to ECW. That's when the lights out, lights on came on. Yeah. Um, how did you end up going to WCW? Was this like a, a clandestine Todd Gordon hooked you up with it? No, I, Paul Heyman fired me. When he fired me, uh, Kevin Sullivan called me. Right then. Uh, so who? Uh, so it was Kevin. Right, Kevin Sullivan brings you in. Were you sort of like guaranteed a contract straight away, or did you have to do? A well, he didn't program? quite bring me in. He talked to me. Uh, Eric Bischoff brought me in, but they gave me such a small contract. I said, uh, "Let's negotiate this contract." They go, uh, so, "Let me go back." They, uh, Kevin called me up to do Monday Nitro, and I couldn't do it. Uh, he goes, "How much will it, will it cost to do our second Monday Nitro?" I said, "You don't have to pay me anything. Just put me over." Because we have to pay you something. I said, okay, five hundred dollars, then we can talk, negotiate. So I wrestled, and and Paul and Kevin Sullivan says, great, you got a job. Boom, boom, boom. And then Eric Bischoff goes, I only want you to wrestle twice a month, one one day and one pay per view a month. And and I go, well, how much am I going to get paid? He goes, what you want? I go, what did I want? He goes, five hundred dollars a match. I go, no, that was just for that night. It's five hundred dollars a match, and then we negotiate after if you want me or not. He goes, no, no negotiation, take it or leave it. I said, I'm going to leave it. Right, so there was absolutely there was no pen to paper. Then you never signed anything. No, I was going to, but they weren't going to know. They weren't going to negotiate no money. I was only going to get paid a thousand dollars a month. That, that that was bullshit. Yeah, uh, so there was no like thoughts of staying there, doing just a couple of matches a month, and then hopefully get more bookings in the future. It's just like absolutely not. No, they didn't want to negotiate. You know, he completely they had no respect for me. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so uh, I didn't have respect for him. I still don't. Yeah, uh, with um, it's funny actually because you mentioned the sec- it's like the second night or the third night show you want. They actually played like a vignette that Sabu's coming, or uh, or was it? Sh- no, it was actually shortly. After, I was on the it? second night They played the vignette on the first night. Yeah, so that really made me think, man. I thought, you know, you're going to be in for a big money contract, and they were going to, you know, really, you know, give you a big. I, th- I thought so too, but they were dumping so much money on Hulk Hogan at the time that no one else was going to be was going to make any money. Any new guys coming in weren't wasn't getting paid. Yeah, with WCW, and obviously Hulk Hogan, you know, was the man there. Was there any thought in the back of your head that if you got too popular, you were, you were, oh, there was always that glass ceiling and Hogan's foot was on top of it? No, uh, I, I found that out later that he, he, he was a little uh, jealous of me. But uh, no, I didn't think about it at the time. And what I was going to do was, my plan was to make a bigger, make some money in WCW and make a bigger name and come back to ECW and, and help ECW. But, but Paul turned into a, you know, he bitched about it. Yeah. Because uh, I was actually thinking, because around the same time, Brian Pillman was doing really well for himself. And the first thing that Hulk Hogan did was try and book him in a match with him where he could beat him clean. And I was thinking, <laughs> yeah. would that be you? Well, I wanted to wrestle him. I offered to wrestle him. And they said, no, his matches were picked out for the next two years. And, and him and Sting was already picked out because I wanted to wrestle him or Sting. And they said, I would never have a chance of wrestling him. I said, I don't have a chance of wrestling the top guys. I don't want to be here. 